coming from the right, the Blue Angels, in diamond formation, three feet separating them from wingtip to canopy. A summer afternoon somewhere in the United States, six A-4 Skyhawks streak across the sky, transformed into instruments of aerial artistry, flown by a team of men who have worked months to perfect a performance of precision, aerobatic, and formation flying. They are neither stunt flyers, daredevils, or showmen. They are naval aviators with an extremely difficult mission to perform. Recruiting. That's their main job, attracting young men to naval careers, both in the air and on the ground. Also, they demonstrate to Navy student flyers the kind of airmanship the Navy expects of them. And they bring the Navy to the American public. This is the story of that mission as they tell it. The U.S. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron the Blue Angels. Meeting the public is our primary job. We try to relate to uh, people every year, to young people, to adults, and to real aerospace enthusiasts that there, in fact, is someone flying in the aircraft. Those are uh, air refueling probes. You have a big aircraft, like a tanker, that flies in front of you. Do you like the air show? OK. We'll see you later. <laughs> You guys are pretty good, I'll tell you. Hey, thank you very much. Sure. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> sure did. There it is, Here you go, young fella. How's that? Thank you okay. very much. How long will it take you to there learn you go. That? One of the most enjoyable aspects of getting involved with the communities that we visit across the country is the chance to occasionally visit orphanages, high schools, and hospitals. Is that right? How old are they? One's 15, another one's 14, another one's 13, one's 11, and I'm the smallest one. You're the smallest one in the family. <laughs> That's good, Kurt. I think he's going to tear it all apart. Yeah, you? I think so, too. You'll be happy. There you go. Mm -hmm. There's a get well card for you, okay? A big part of our public appearances have to do with our recruiting work, like dinners and face-to-face -face conversations with college students who are prospects for naval careers. Took me down to an air show in Sanford, Florida. Good. United States Navy? So far, it looks like that. What's your feelings towards the type aircraft that you want to fly when you get out? Being able to handle yourself in the social situation uh, demands a talent just like flying does. It's difficult to adapt to all the different categories of crowd, whether they be professionals, students, or even military personnel. To adapt to them and to relate our job is a difficult task. Next to the leader's aircraft or in a relative position to his aircraft, that becomes more difficult because of the aerodynamic loads that are on. Like we said, we have a mission. And the accomplishment of this mission is a difficult task, and we could never do it without a couple of things that have been long-standing traditions with the Blues. Those two things are teamwork and a striving for perfection. And that is the real story to tell about the Blue Angels. The real story of the Blue Angels. They come from the ranks of naval aviators assigned to the fleet. Every year, applicants are reviewed by the Bureau of Naval Personnel, and a report is made on their past performance, their record as naval officers in all their assignments. A readout on 20 applicants is given to the team and they assess the ability, qualifications, and motivation of each individual. Then, three to four aviators are selected to fill the new openings to become Blue Angels. Pensacola Naval Air Station, the home of the Blue Angels. Every year, six pilots embark on a grueling schedule months of daily practice. Their objective? Perfection. Okay, I'm set to have a good one out at field number six, huh? Oh, in case anyone's interested, uh, Chuck and Johnny... As in any other profession, 
practice makes Waver perfect. For Atlanta, his end, so and all the maneuvers there. that you learn in flight okay, training must one. be developed to a state of absolute perfection. And your first reaction is, when you join the team, that it can't be done. Watching an air show, what we do may seem quite impossible. But the reason for that is because no one individual could do it alone. However, as a team, we begin to realize that the final results can be achieved. So we subordinate ourselves, and we only think of one thing, and that's teamwork. Blue Angels are similar to any other good team, with a lot of individual sacrifice and self-discipline. But not only do we learn an individual higher level of concentration, we learn to think together. One thing you keep in your mind all the time, it's that no matter what you're doing, you give it your very best effort. You learn to put forth that 110% effort each and every time. When we say we depend upon each other, we're not talking about just the pilots alone. We're talking about the maintenance personnel as well. The kind of flying that we do, we allow very, very little margin for error for the pilots, and we allow absolutely no margin of error for our maintenance technicians. We're out there every day just like the pilots. We want to know that plane, every part in it from front to back, and we check it, and then we double check it. When we turn that aircraft over to them, we know it's right. We've got a tradition. An air show has never had to be canceled due to maintenance problems. We're going to make sure we preserve that tradition. And each year, that tradition is preserved as the Blue Angels bring a perfect blend of men and machines to another air show season. Nearly every weekend morning throughout the summer, these aircraft stand ready, their powerful engines quiet, but ready to spring to life in the afternoon sun. And the Blue Angels are ready, ready to demonstrate their mastery of low-level formation flying and precision aerial techniques. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lieutenant John Patton, narrator for the United States Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels. For more than 60 years, the United States Navy kept the breast of aviation technology by flying the most modern aircraft available from both land-based installations and aircraft carrier flight decks the world over. Spanning the last 27 years, a select group of naval aviators have had the opportunity to demonstrate the precision techniques of naval aviation to the public, hoping to inspire our young men and women to choose careers in the United States Navy. Now, if I may direct your attention to the ramp before us, I ask that you observe the manner in which the six demonstration pilots approach their aircraft, are saluted by their crew chief, and receive last-minute instructions on the status of their assigned aircraft. The precision maneuvers you will see demonstrated here this afternoon are coordinated tactical techniques developed in training and in actual combat by our Navy and Marine Corps pilots. In combat, these maneuvers might be flown from treetop level to 60,000 feet. But for the team, it is a continuous demonstration of their skill and training in a very low altitude environment. The aircraft you will see being flown here this afternoon is the McDonnell Douglas A4F Skyhawk, a single seat, light attack aircraft, versions of which have been operational with the United States Navy and Marine Corps since 1955. This is where all the hours of training pay off, when we can go up in the air and show what it's possible to achieve through teamwork and dedicated effort. I guess what we're ultimately trying to show is that high goals and high ideals are well worth pursuing. We try to give a flight demonstration that speaks for itself.
These are the Blue Angels. They are men who have achieved a perfect display of aerial artistry and precision flying, achieved through the kind of dedicated teamwork that is the tradition of naval aviation.